Good day, welcome back to Joe Devers Lone Wolf HD Remastered. <sighs> we, we barely survived the previous fight. But we did. Let's see. It's my weapon that is broken. Not my shield. Oh. Then it shouldn't be a shield icon. Mm. 285. Why am I using a much worse weapon? Dexterity? Is it because of the strength? It can't be. Anyways, we got a better weapon now. Ha. 270? Okay, so that is the choice weapon. Gotcha. I also want to equip... Elixir of Adgana. That can be useful in a boss fight. Okay, the battle was a long one and it took its toll on the archive around you. Many of the shells were knocked over, the contents shattered. Those artifacts that were not lost to combat had already been ruined by the war, war dark's rough search. While a few items might remain intact in here, you doubt any of them were the vessel you seek. Fortunately, the raiders may have done your work for you. Nearby. There is a locked chest with the same Dracarim symbol you saw on the one back near the beginning of this misadventure. In all likelihood, the chest of valuables contains everything from this archive that the Wardak considered too important to leave behind. Its uh, scrutiny might prove to be your reward, assuming you can you can get the chest open without ruining whatever it holds. There's no time to lose. You don't master that. You take care of the lock using your slide knife and picks you have in your backpack. Yes. We do that. This has been a long time since I did this. Okay, so. Oh. Ooh, almost. Damn it. Well, I still have uh, 12 more. Ah! There you go. Lovely. Only lost one pin. Mm. With a few skillful twists of your picks, you defeat the lock on the Wardark's chest. You examine the chest carefully, making sure there are no hidden dangers. Satisfied with that it is safe to open, you do so. Inside you find three items of note. The first is an ornate amulet craved in Shianti fashion. Though you sense no power within the pendant, it might well serve as the vessel Xerator needs for his transference ritual. You also find two blue crystals, much like the ones you have seen before. These are small, and the light within them is not very bright. Whew. But they may still be of use to you. The chest also contains useful supplies that your enemies have brought here from the Targ. Ironically enough, you shall be the one who takes advantage of them. Oh, what is the crystal filter? Removes all harmful effects. Nice! Elixir of Volko increases intelligence by 10 for 10 seconds. And it resets cooldown on all Kai disciplines. Wow, that can be extremely useful. I'm taking it all. With a blue crystal and the vessels safely tucked away in your pack, you take a moment to reflect on where you need to go next. There is no time to waste, but rushing off without a plan could be more costly than being cautious. You have a red crystal in everything from the Warlock's chest. Though there may be more searching you could do in the tunnels. These are all the components you need for Seratar's Shianti ritual. You should head back to him now. Let's rest up first. This place is crawling with enemies. 
Uh, are you serious? I'm doing it. If there's a fight, I'm gonna skip it. For the sake of progress. No! See you in a jiffy! Okay, I've decided not to rest here anymore. Three times have I tried to rest now. Every time I'm being attacked. Well, I can't blame blame them for attacking me. It is crawling with enemies after all, so I'm being extremely stupid for resting there thrice in a row. So let's continue on to Zeratar's hideout. Yes, I do. Though you had reason to worry for Leandra, she is quite safe when you return to Zeratar's chamber. She and the renegade wizard are sitting together on the floor, talking animatedly about her prototype engine and the uses you already discovered for the Shianti cube. Master Lone Wolf, you hear Zeratar say as you approach. You have made it. Uh, there you go. Rather than respond, you hold out the crystal and vessel. Will these do? This was all I could find. Without taking a lot of time, we do not have to search for more. The mage rises and looks over what you have. You, your insight serves you well, Lone Wolf. He takes the crystals and the vessel, the amulet of Shianti make, uh, and examines them more closely. The blue crystals are not what we need for this ritual, as you know. They hold a great healing power, but that is not what you need to survive the cloud. You must repel its influence altogether. After prolonged exposure to the poison, healing yourself will not suffice. Zeratar's attention now focuses on the red crystal. This one, on the other hand, will do nicely. Thanks to its energy, I can craft a talisman that will ward off the fog for whoever wears it. You will be completely immune to its effects. Leander stands up and returns to your side, with a frown on her face. Will it only protect one of us at a time? He nods, setting the materials down on the pedestal in the middle of the room. Sadly, even my knowledge of Shianti magic is limited. If I tried to make the amulet powerful enough to protect you both, it would likely cost all of my life force to imbue. Your life force? What do you mean? asks Leandro. The crystals irradiate great power by themselves. However, in order to work within the artifacts, they need um, a spark. <clears throat> what source applied to this park in the Shanti Rite of Old? I do not yet know. Seratar sighs. Resorting to my own life force is the only means I have found so far. I doubt Shanti wizards did the same. They must have known another way. But this is not the time for such uh, speculations. Let us delay no longer, Master Wolf. You hand the red crystal over to Seratar when he asks for it. Very, but willing to trust for now. If the mage is going to betray you, now will be the time. Sertar takes the crystal in his left hand and he lays the other one on the amulet, where it rests on the pedestal. He utters some words in the ancient language of the Shianti and a red light flows between the crystal and his body. You can see the energy being channeled through his outstretched fingers into the amulet itself. When Serator has completed the ritual, only scarred dust remains in his hand. The amulet starts to glow, rising off the pedestal to hover in front of him. Hmm. Nice. Yes, so let's continue. Summoning all his arcane might, Serator speaks to the last few words of the rite and seals his great work. He has magically forged a crystalline amulet with a pulsing heart of red. The amulet settles into his grasp, empowered and complete. Serator, however, does not stop glowing. The ancient energy he whispers in pain. It is too great! It is going to! An explosion of light force detonates all around the wizard hurling him across the room. The shockwave is enough to knock you and Leandra off your feet, but you are otherwise unharmed. You quickly get to your feet and run over to Zerator. He is badly burned and breathing 
past the ribs that sounds shattered. Blood trickles from both corners of his mouth. With an agonized cough, he stares up at you, only one eye able to open. Never call up, she groans, his voice weak and fading. But you cannot put back down. The talisman? Is it still? You nod. Uh. Wait, what? But you cannot put back down? The talisman? Huh? Okay, you nod, holding enough for him to see. When Serator realized that his sacrifice was not in vain, he looks both resigned and relieved. His eyes go still for a moment, yet they widen again at the thought of one lost, desperate chance. He looks you up, he looks up at you again, his right hand pointing at your backpack. The blue crystal you found, Master Lone Wolf. I might be able to unlock their magic and heal myself. His eyes look pleading, and as soon as Leandra hears his words, so do hers. You hold the power to save this man's life. One who was so close to the traitor and yet did not prevent his betrayal. Did he even want to stop him? Perhaps his amulet is a trap. One lost chance for his bloodline to destroy the Kai Lords. Moreover, can you really rely on his craft? If you trust him, the blue crystals will be destroyed. You could keep them for yourself for later. You might even be able to use them to cross the chamber and avoid the risk of his amulet altogether. Uh, whatever you decide, you have to make up your mind. In spite of your doubts, you still think that Serotar deserves to be saved. You won't help Serotar. His motivations are unclear, and the amulet may be flawed. Hmm. I'm not a harshless bastard. <laughs> Serotar is kin to the man who betrayed Summerland and destroyed the Kai Order. Even burned and dying, he bears a strong enough resemblance to Volotar that it hurts you to look upon him. Even so, you cannot bring yourself to condemn him for the actions of his brother. You have no proof that he has been anything but for forthright this entire time. Much as you fear you may regret his decision. You nod and offer the broken mage both blue crystals. Serazar is very weak, but holding the raw crystals in his hands, he manages to draw the energy he needs from it. A sapphire light rises up out of the crystal like a wave flowing through his body. <clears throat> in his wake, all his pain seems to vanish. The era has been silent and she takes a deep breath before speaking her mind. I know you have very, very reason you have every reason to be very, even angry, but I think you did the right thing, Lord Wolf. She adds softly before stepping away. I know you wanted revenge, but this was the right thing to do. Now that his wounds has been purged, Serator is well enough to move again. He sits up in a cold stone on the cold stone floor and clears his voice to speak. I'm not gonna do his voice because it hurts my throat. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you. I will never be able to atone for what my brother did, but at least I have managed to be some use to you. Now, some use of you to I'm bleh. <laughs> Once I have recovered, I shall return to Torren. Self pity and seclusion will not make things right again. Years ago, Volotar destroyed your whole world. Now you have saved the life of his kinsman. Before you go, I would like to express my gratitude once more. His right hand recesses in, in the white sleeve of his tunic. Then he hands out to you a signet ring that bears the emblem of the Brotherhood of the Crystal Star. Please, take this. I have not felt worthy to wear it in a long time. But in giving it to you, perhaps both it and I can be redeemed. Oh. 
nice. Thank you. I might destroy it sometime. <laughs> Holding no grudge. No, I think I'm gonna end the episode there. My throat hurts. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. Until next time, goodbye.